Series 93, 18, items 1 through 44. Life, buoyed by its initial success, man, decided to write a sequel, Man the Collective. Although not commonly known, life has a prize for anyone who can make it laugh. You see, son, the humor inherent in the offer is in the words commonly known, and they both had a hearty chuckle. <laughs> On good days, one man would sometimes think simply being alive is like a hot fudge sundae, and being alive and conscious is like also having whipped cream and a cherry on top. <laughs> Sad to say, but few days were like this for the man. And even those that were, he didn't entirely trust. <laughs> Ooh, Cuda Pistachio <laughs> Merchant. What if, we, what if we could have like simply, if we could have it like simply being conscious is the big deal and being conscious while still alive made it even better. <laughs> Ooh, he shivered. <laughs> Trying to get somewhere extraordinaire. Ask yourself, what would you give to get where you want to go? Casual observation. Only the non-traveling old stay-at-homers believe this applies to just behavior. Fizzy and other ologies. <laughs> or, look at the chart, boy, look at the chart. You have juice in your stomach, juice in your sex, juice in your bowels and brains. So, okay, boy, which will it be? Yes, you in the back, said a man, looking in the classroom of his mind. Why are you still in the back? One man's recent scan. Being civilized might not be so bad if they didn't make us take it so seriously. <laughs> Restrictions on possibilities is always a grave affair. Daddy, could we put it like this? Restrictions on possibility is always a matter of gravity. Yes, my boy, so long as you're using the certain proper definition of the word gravity. Ah, what ho, Dad. Truly, what ho. If history lives long enough, some outlaws are eventually taken to be mystics. What ho. Yeah. <laughs> Update for Ken and Barbie and all of their kin and kind. We could say that there are two possible pursuits of happiness. The old-fashioned hormonal one, and then some other sort. According to certain reports, there are those who will still chase the form of variety at their own otherwise expense. <laughs> One fellow's explanation of things, quoting, if urine didn't rhyme with untrue, we wouldn't be in the sorry state we are today. <laughs> End quote. More truisms refurbished and updated. The dumb die but once, but they do that one over and over and over and over. Just think, noted a farmer to his son, those who get mad at and make fun of cows are relieved of any possible additional responsibilities. Cosmological historical revision. There were four original forces that created this universe, but one of them dropped out. Those who don't know what's going on don't like to hear what's going on. Turnabout quiz. How many more conscious men would it take to make one ordinary dumb one? My boy, said a carousel operator to his son, did you know that we originally had a Ferris wheel? <laughs> <coughs> Since man, the homo sapien, does not literally require the presence of a mind to physically survive, this function cannot be fed and satisfied as simply as his other hungers. No, it is indeed unique in that it must be entertained if it is to be enriched and nourished. The ordinary have civilization as their attempt. What has a more enthusiastic person? If info is its own reward, then what should we expect from more spirited data? The man brought before the king chuckled and said, You can certainly kill me, but after I'm dead, you'll still be dumb. And, and the ruler turned to Nade and asked, Is that true? <laughs> A man who thinks about thinking things is no longer confined full-time to an outdated brain. 
Cats need mull over matters feline, and rats on those more rodent. But man has nothing so native to weigh, and thus has some slack not physically known. <laughs> Architects lament. We are provided a penthouse, but made worry over basement affairs. <laughs> Appraisers reply. Any song sung can be sung in reverse. Think about it. A four-pound lump in a suit and tie and apparently weighing... <laughs> In a suit and tie and apparently weighing 185, <laughs> called his family together before him and told him, <laughs> while being alive here on this planet, it has come finally to my attention that men too dearly love to talk about aging, sickness, and death. So let's get it right out in the open here and be done with it. He then assumed the stance of a choir director and led them all in singing as loudly as possible, aging, sickness, and death, aging, sickness, and death. 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 And so on until they were sick of hearing about it too. <laughs> hey, what say? Let's hear it for the lump. <laughs> Rainy day fun. How to be dumber than you ever imagined possible. <laughs> Criticize the ordinary. If you're asked, can you talk faster? A man writes us to say, I never hear you say anything serious about politics, finances, religion, mama, or trying to improve your bad habits. Being human is the only journey in which the traveler knows that he's going somewhere but doesn't know where it is. Alternative version. Being human is the only journey in which the traveler knows where he's going but doesn't know that he's going somewhere. Which one do you like best? A human interest item from another universe. <laughs> One man waited till well past his middle years to ever put his best foot forward, explaining that before then he didn't have a best foot. <laughs> Even the ordinary can laugh at things they don't believe exist. The post office is tracking of one more conscious man. First he was here, then he was there, and then he was someplace else. A lad standing on the corner cocked his ear again and thought, there's a certain way the truth to me sounds just like a song. <laughs> and back under the mighty M's we find this definition, man. The only part of creation that, in part, creates itself. History, in part. Man was put here so that this planet might have symbolism and thus a form of reality that is, in fact, more than it is, in fact. Sidebar, on lesser developed worlds, they're only up to the level of metaphors. Where are you up to, O oh great literate-minded one? Ones. Civilization or a hunting they just went. As arrows hurt eagles, so two words, man. But daddy, is this the way it's supposed to be? Where in the world did you pick up such an unseemly concept as supposed to be? <laughs> Men must ordinarily exaggerate what they say since it means so little to begin with. <laughs> A more conscious man was the original model and inspiration for the term pig-headed, but without the pig head. <laughs> Important, important, humorous one-liner from the orb closest to Venus. Everyone really enjoys being told what to do in life. Especially not so a more alert man. That's okay, son, don't worry about it. It's my opinion that if we were on a planet with a lot less oxygen, ideas like that one then might make some sense. <laughs> Familia responsibilities re-examined. An earth-based parent who will assure his offspring as to the validity of collective thinking and reality has committed a homicide without a visible weapon. <laughs> and now, some humor and enlightenment and some combination from the wild world of musical showbiz. One guy said to his mind, hey, if you ever get that thing in tune, weld it. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Definition. Being ordinary. A temporary time out from being what you ought to be. Well, it should be temporary. Right from the start, as soon as man's brain became conscious and he began to think, he suspected what was going on. Civilization, family, prestige, and position. All things to help you disremember. Not too long ago, a man thought, why do I not find it routinely curious that while it is my mind that brags and boasts, it is in fact only my physical parts that ever achieve anything resembling success, yet they never have anything to say. Okay, have you fully disremembered now? The collective intelligence of man is a herd. The herd is the combined understanding of man. You may have a ticket, Sundance, but that still doesn't mean that a train will actually stop in a dinkwater town like this. <laughs> Space travel, a metaphorical concept for the desire to leave the planet. <laughs> the structure, no effort without thinking, but just thinking is no effort. On this one world, the riding of neural bicycles requires that you be able to maintain a balance between being privately rude while appearing publicly not to be so. But back on this planet, the figure in the isolated shower stall looked first at his soap, then at his weapons in hand, and mused. A misplaced comma has been the death of many an unwary man. Sociology in a test tube. One man alone cannot be a society, but if he gets mad enough, he'll attract others, and then they can be. <laughs> While watching a wildlife special on TV one afternoon, this one man's stomach reflected. If I treated his mind the way leopards treat gazelles, and suddenly the man interrupted saying, if, what the hell do you mean, if? <laughs> City intellectual man, definition. Spinal fluid in a test tube in a suit and tie. <laughs> Squirrels are like nature's way of trying to make rats forget where they came from. <laughs> if, if, what the hell do you mean, if? <laughs> that was all the same page, the same item. <laughs> Dual histories of one guy. He first thought, boy, if my mind could have as much fun as my body, I'd be a riot. Then later thought, boy. If my body could have as much fun as my mind, I couldn't stand it. He's working on the third stage. General locale, planet Earth. Specifics, how to determine your exact position. Out of all the alive, alert, and moving creatures here, why is it man alone who loves to hear himself talked about? Unrelated inquiry. What if it is actually the dumb who really understand what's going on and the clever who do not? <laughs> ah, come on, says one man. Don't bring up stuff like that. <laughs> Just talk about me and make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> one guy's grouch. The collective ain't crap. And most of the individuals I know just barely are. <laughs> When ordinary people ponder the possibility of anything extraordinary occurring in life, they think of such as being either of a physical nature or of a non-physical nature. Someone who has some suspicion of just what the hell is going on around here thinks of it better than that. Romantic update or a hunting they still go. <laughs> If eagle couples could talk, would they say to one another, I love you, would worms? And which of the two would be the more likely, and why? One man says, to me, ordinary thinking is no more than just one thing after another. Then ask, is there any more than that? <laughs> one man thought, any philosophy, religion, or other mental model that causes some men to feel they've actually been harmed, either emotionally or intellectually, seems to me to have missed the point. 
To be just minimally conscious is to conceive the mind as a weapon, aimed at certain problems and questions, and never hitting same, thus seems lamentable. The trick is not in finding new targets or improved ballistics, but in raising your sights. Only toads, not elephants, react to BB shots by crying, Oh, I've been hit. <laughs> Furthermore, only frogs shoot at other frogs. The trick is in raising your sights. Those who condemn the acts of their childhood are even worse than children. As he would push off from the dock each morning, one man would cry out, Electrochemicals away. <laughs> Some civilians keep coming up with approaches similar to this. Take drugs, get edgy, jump up and down and yell, and like that. <laughs> the collective need one another. A more conscious man needs everything he can get his hands on. And now our, our fairly grim tale for the day, subtitle, Oh Brother. <clears throat> On this one world was this one man who once thought, since no one wants to hear about the hormone-neuron connection, or about the relationship between the cats and the birds, or about the ties to which man's mind and his physique and the dependence of the present on the past, hmm... <laughs> Maybe I'll just tell all the merry-go-rounds that they used to be Ferris wheels. <laughs> Earth-driven epic in one sentence or less. Men know what they are. Minds don't. The collective have always told would-be mystics and those with other unusual travel interests that they are deranged. <laughs> this approach both works and doesn't work. Just like any good rational approach is supposed to work. <laughs> After many years of standing on the station platform with his neighbors, one man looked away and thought, since it's becoming obvious to me that no train is ever going to arrive here, and even those that apparently do never actually go anywhere, what's to stop me from mentally terrorizing and kissing off the whole affair? Yeah. Travel advisory. If they ever get your name in a dictionary, you're done for. Yet another reason you shouldn't stand too close to the bulletin boards in the post office. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the title of the item, the heading. There is a certain mental lawlessness about doing this. In one state, for 48 cents, you can send yourself out of town. <laughs> a safety feature. The dumb will never catch you at it. Oh, they can get hostile and suspicious, but they never understand why. <laughs> Try, trying, to private, trying to privately be more conscious, definition. Privately trying to be more conscious. Mysticism with the martyrdom removed. A boy on the midway whose father used to guess your weight and the extent of your patience. <laughs> Didn't know whether that would travel through the airways or not. Sat on a box and thought. What if the few actually working to be more conscious is just life's way of keeping everybody else from even trying? <laughs> Alert from the Emergency Broadcast Network. <laughs> All published reports are now inoperable. Side note, they've always been that way. And now back to your life. I mean, show, show. <laughs> In a supreme act of desperation and exhilaration, one man hurled a homemade hand grenade into the very bowels, nay heart, of a dictionary and was done with it.
Now we can start. Well, ask yourself, it was a, trying to do something, trying to get somewhere extraordinary. And it said, ask yourself, what would you give to get where you want to go? And it was followed by a casual observation. Only the non-traveling old stay-at-homers believe this applies to just behavior. Uh, back to some of what we were talking about. Not to give everything that ordinary people do, they're just due because, because. But to show how everyone dances and skates right up to the very edge of what might work physically, and then for you, or you could ask yourself again, why is it that the mind can continually run up to a certain point, whether you knew it in the past or not, and almost look point blank at what's going on, and yet always turn away? Always turns away. Uh, all of the many well-known, or publicly known at all, at least attempts for people to do something extraordinary. Uh, if you were real crude, would be sitting ducks to make, to be the subject of fun. Uh, people attempting to be uh, esoterically religious through some ritualistic means. Fasting. People <coughs> praying, people chanting, people attempting to sit and meditate and hold one thought in mind. All such as that, and we've taken drive-by shots at them, not to hurt them, because in case you hadn't noticed, they is bulletproof. <laughs> and if you think otherwise, then you ain't. <laughs> you got a mind like Swiss cheese already. They are bulletproof. But you can point out if you, or you could privately see, which you have already done yourself, to end up this far, or in this position. That, with no criticism, that is, that it doesn't mean anything in overall health and progress and stability of life, but you could see, especially once you tried it, that, wait a minute, we've got all these people trying to do so-and-so. Fasting. There's one. And just numerous, capacious volumes of books written about the benefits of fasting. And you could take a quick glance. It's like, what are you people trying to do? And, they, and it sounds like, well, they're trying to do something that would be an extraordinary expansion of one's understanding, et cetera. And you go, that's what I'm after. And you say, what, what method? I mean, how do you go about it? Fasting is the way. All right, you might try it a while and find out that it didn't seem to work with you. They, they might even admit in the beginning we can't predict you know, exactly when, if any time it may happen. Or you could just drive by with your little half-cocked smart aleck pistol and just hear about it and think, boy, is that ridiculous. They're trying to do something they claim to unfold, to, to enlarge, to enrich their inner person, whether they're calling it spiritual, intellectual, and how they're going about it. At first it didn't strike me. So I'm playing somebody's part. They can say, at first it didn't strike me because I heard about it. Maybe I'm used to it. I don't know why it is. But I heard fasting. And I thought, well, you know, it's like a reasonable way to go. But now I think about it, I had to be an idiot. they got to be idiots. What in the hell does fasting have to do with trying to do something to one's consciousness? Right? You follow? We can have it either way. But let's take that approach that you were just looking at it and thinking, that is absolute insanity. Worse than that, it's inoperable. Because there's no connection. Ooh, what hole? Hold up. There's all kinds of connection. What are they trying to do? What are people trying to do who go on some sort of, uh, you know, these kind of praying things that instead of fasting, there have been all sorts of monasteries and offshoot cults from established religions that people attempted to pray. And if they're going to stay up 25 hours a day, they pray. Okay, I keep forgetting this is earth. Yeah. Right, 20, they're going to play, pray 22 hours a day and then sleep too. As they try, if they're going to be awake, they try and pray nonstop. And you could, at first you might hear that. But then you might think, what in the world does that have to do with anything? Uh, well, let's go back to fasting. That's the best one. Do you follow to set up the 
scenario. It would be easy enough for a very rational, sophisticated person to say that accomplishes nothing. I don't. That's just busy work. What in the hell do you think that trying to starve yourself has to do with changing your consciousness? And if you were just passing by and you heard this going on, you might go, yeah, I'm with him. Now, I don't care if you people starve yourself, but don't delude yourself. He's correct. That doesn't do anything. What hole? What does it do? Get past the obvious part. Well, it makes you hungry. <laughs> it makes you irritable. You know, when you first get started, all right, all right, all right. Come on, come on, come on. Well, that probably makes you, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe tired. Yeah, yeah, you're nearly there. Well, then you start getting dizzy. Oh, -ho. <laughs> do we thinketh we hear an unrecognizable or an unnoted symbol, synonym for altered state of consciousness? What, being dizzy? Maybe I made it too plain in the beginning. But do you, just think about it. Nobody ever points that out when that is the obvious how it stumbled, that man stumbled upon it somewhere. That somebody, I can make up a story as well as anybody. I should have done that. I said, you people don't know it, but I, I have access not to the Dead Sea Scrolls, not the public <laughs> ones, but the real ones. And it was a retelling, well, it was the original telling, I'm sorry, of the book of uh, Deuteronomy, <laughs> Exodus. <laughs> One that I can pronounce. <laughs> Deuterotary. <laughs> Deut Does that have something to do with it? A camel that was a prophet of Deuterodomedary? Was that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two camels. They were a team of prophets. Do the Domeray, huh? <laughs> but see, if I told you that, at any rate, that somewhere, just imagine this, that some guy, uh, some caveman, sometime between Ken and Barbara getting thrown out and the day of cavemen setting up cities, and a guy gets cut off from his clan, from the tribe of hunters, from his, and he wanders out in the desert by himself, alone. Don't need a whole bunch of people with him. And he goes out food. To the point that he begins to hallucinate. And all he had to do was just be a certain type of guy. And they find him later. And there he is. He's lost 50 pounds. And all, all the obvious. All that ordinary people would point out. Even the would-be mystics. And yet they know, you know his eyes are like this. And et cetera. And they give him a little food, a little water. And he sort of becomes. He gets more like himself. The truth is he's more coming down for those in later years. That have been taking around people taking psychedelic drugs, the guy's sort of coming down. They would say, well, he's more like himself now that he rested for a few days and I got a little water in him and you know, let him suck on some bark. <laughs> <coughs> Getting some of his strength back. It would have been very easy. This would have been the beginning. That that man, all he had to do was have a certain turn of mind and he starts sort of coming down back amongst, back at the level of his collective the intelligence and consciousness of his collective crowd. And he starts saying, you know, especially they're going to say for a few minutes, once or twice, like, boy, you know, how long are you out there? You know, I didn't have a watch or a calendar. Well, God, you didn't have anything? No, nothing. God, I bet you thought you'd die. Yeah, I did. How'd you keep from going nuts? Now, that's strange. Now you're getting somewhere. Because the first few days, the first week, I thought, surely I'll die. And I got so weak, I couldn't hardly walk. And it was almost like, He's probably the guy that made up the term second wind. I laid there maybe for two or three days. I got under, I, there, there wasn't even any rocks out there. And so I had to get behind just the shadow of a rock. <laughs> and I must have laid there two or three days, and I just thought, I'm so weak, I'm dead. And it was almost like I, oh, I don't know, I'll make up a term. It's like I got my second wind, and I got up, and I just, I just started walking. I don't know. But here's the thing. You guys may laugh. No, we won't. I dreamed I talked to somebody. Ha, ha, ha. You said you wouldn't laugh. Yeah. Something happened. The point is, he could have very likely, within one given area, been the first person to ever have a mystical experience. 
Now, assuming that before he left, he was as sane as anyone else. He wasn't given over to having spells and fits. But after that time, he came back, and they knew that he was in some kind of different condition besides being skin and bones. Then after you know a few days, and he seemed to kind of acclimate himself back into the tribe, back into the group. And then he seemed to be his old sane self. He says, I'm going to tell a few of you something. And he comes out with a story like, I suddenly out there, and I'm sure it was something similar to this. I was out there walking in the heat, feeling the breath of death. I knew I'd never see any of you again. I'd already given myself over to it. And it was like the first few days I was trying to fight it. And I realized there's no food. I'm not going anywhere. Why fight it? And it was then almost as death, speaking allegorically maybe, but it was like almost as death came up. And I thought, well, who, how can I fight? And then it's like a few more days or hours, I don't know what. And it was almost like death quit being a metaphor and it actually became a presence there. And then a few more days, I know it sounds strange, and it's like I merged. The death wasn't something out there waiting on me. Suddenly death was just a part of being alive. And after that, I could make, you can pick up any book out of that occult section in your local library. And it starts describing. I, be, I merged with the universe. I realized that, you know, the whole idea of death, me out here fighting for death, is like the same thing ordinarily of us fighting for life. And I suddenly realized, where am I going to go? I, I no longer feared death. I no longer feared life. In a sense, I became indifferent to whether I died. And worse than that, or beyond that, I thought things. I thought about ordinary things, but in a way that was just absolutely unordinary. It was almost like, not literally, but it's almost like rocks and trees, the heat, the sky. It's almost like things talk to me, not in words, but I realized we we're talking the same life, et cetera. Do you understand? That's a, just a classic description from east to west, north to south. Throughout all the epochs of humanity, of uh, transcendental experiences, increased consciousness, and of course, by many collective observations, walking derangement, which is always, that's one way life keeps it in check. But, what I'm trying to bring you back to, realize how easy it would be to pick on or just to single out fasting, and just real quickly, no kind of theological or philosophical background, just say, wait a minute, you people are trying to, what do you call it? And they say, we're trying to increase our consciousness. We're trying to expand our awareness of the world. Okay, got you. I, I, I'm interested in such that. But you're doing it by, by going without food. And you can say, don't you see? It's worse than a dichotomy. It's a CD. Uh, not a CD, an SD. <laughs> a silly dichotomy. Like you people are going the opposite direction. Well, why in the hell are you going to? And then you might even get real fancy and say, wait a minute. Go back and read the story of Buddha. He already been through this. He tried to go through all that crap and almost died. You know, almost drowned. He couldn't even stop in a stream. And he suddenly realized, what the hell am I doing? I'm just using the story as they tell it. What am I doing out here starving myself? You know, licking raindrops off of leaves once a month. And I'm about to die, and I'm no closer to understanding anything there ever was. Then suddenly, supposedly, or more or less suddenly, then he understood something for the first time. <laughs> so you could use that story on these people and say, you guys hadn't learned anything. After 2,500 years, you're still here trying to torture the body. It's all it amounts to. Don't tell me you're trying to make God happy. You're torturing the body. You people, you've got the wrong attitude toward life itself at the most mundane survival hormonal level, and you're trying to torture the body and thinking in some ways going to increase the mind body. You people are nuts. Mm -hmm. huh? They may not be more nuts than anybody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to the point that I feared was got too blatant to begin with, all religion, when it purports itself to be of a immediate or a li in a lifetime. To be of practical significance. They're all trying to do one thing. And they will not admit it. And I say will not admit it. Just since it's us talking. They cannot admit it. It's irrelevant to admit it. If they did verbally admit it. It would, wouldn't mean anything. Because people can say anything. But they don't even get around to verbally. Admitting what? That it's all a direct attempt. As best they can do. To assault and to change the brain chemistry. And since what we were talking about, I believe last time or a time or two, that I fear did not hit 
directly enough, I was giving a, an ad hoc origin of how religion came about, the concept of God, is that people have a mind, they have a consciousness that can dream of extraordinary things, such as change, such as free will. They can dream of it, and then they try it, and each person, finally in the privacy and despair of their own little brain, and their own little life, goes, am I the only person that can't do crap? Am I the only person that, you know, I dream of going on fantastic intellectual or spiritual voyages, and I can't even stop biting my fingernails. Is this it? Is anybody else in the world as weak? As stupid? As misdirected? As I am? And most people don't, this doesn't come up a lot in just cocktail conversations. <laughs> Your, your laughter puts my case to rest. You, you understand? Just, you know, when's the last time a, a sane person came up to you and asked, am I the only weak, dumb, childish, you know, unimportant person who's got on a suit and tie in the world? It does not come up. It would be irrelevant. It would serve no purpose. But the idea of a God, it is Maybe I should have made it a, I could have made it a mathematical formula. The being able to dream of that which you can't do puts the mind in a quandary. Not a rock, rock quandary because, <laughs> but a quandary. The way out is what? That change is possible, but all I need is a little outside help. Hence God. As soon as the mind looks outside of itself to a God, you're now into something else that an item I wrote last time that I know perhaps didn't strike you because it went by real fast. Can you talk faster? Thank you. <laughs> and I know that there's a word, before I did it, that has clinical, psychological, academic connotations. I said that in life there were Two groups, the behaviorist and the thinkers. Mm -hmm. Except I meant it in my own way. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean behaviorist and whatever the dictionary under psychology describes it. I'm talking about that there are those who think in a certain way, and they think about thinking things and everyone else. Their thoughts are almost limited solely to behavior. Survival. Hormonal things. Mm -hmm. It's all behavior. And I said they're both believe they're in favor of change. But one of the groups is shooting blanks. <laughs> as long as you think about God, you're thinking about behavior. And as long as you, and when I say God, of course, now I'm saying that the mind says, well, I can't, I can't deal with this. I can't do what I can think about. It's like I've got a driver's license. It's like I've got hands, feet. I've got money for gas. I've got maps. I've got maps of every goddamn place in the world. One thing. I don't have a car. <laughs> it's always, don't you find exhilarating to make up a brand new sort of extensive allegory on the spot and then wonder, you know, will I make this thing run? I was going to make it a little bit further. Instead of just saying, but I don't have a car, then ordinary people, they, they would look down and go, well, and they look at the body. Because what else you got when the mind, you can't, you don't know what else to do. And when the merry-go-rounds do what merry-go-rounds are wont to do, that's why the guy's father told the boy, said, hey, did you know that originally our family, we had a Ferris wheel? Yeah. It's God. It's God to carousel owners. Think about it, all right? <laughs> if you think... It's when the mind, as it must, turns outside of itself that I can dream of things, you know, such as I've got a driver's license, I've got maps, I've got money for gas, but I don't have a car. Then the ordinary, a split second after that, if they were doing this kind of allegorical progression, they would look down and go, well, that's not true, I do have a car, the body. And that almost sounds like now we're getting somewhere, except for this, they can't make the body go. But, there's also a way out of that. At least you can work directly on it. When I say you can't make it go, you cannot just physically 
put yourself in some sort of intellectual transcendental state. You start playing around with it by fasting, chanting, torturing the body, playing around with it, just hit or miss. But as long as you look at the body and go, well, wait a minute, I don't, have any, I don't even have a car. That is, the mind is back at its cul-de-sac, or worse than yet, a cul-de-sac merry-go-round. I don't want to stop and think about it either. But it says, no, wait a minute, I do, have a, I do have a vehicle. I'm not carless. I've got, the car. I've got a body, the car. You're now at what I was referring to as a behaviorist, which is the same thing as being religious. It's the same thing as the mind finding one way out, finding the injection hole in each person's you know, Ken and Barbie doll. Here I am, I'm plastic, I can't do anything, I can't move. But you look down and somewhere there's a hole where you were injected with a mole and you think it's God. <laughs> there's the pathway to God. It's behavior, it's behavior. That's all they can do after that, all right? It's a possibility then. If my mind can think it, there's got to be some potential reality to being able to exercise this. Hmm, what will I do? We don't have to make fun of it. The ordinary people, there's history. You've been through it. And they go, what will I do? I mean, I want to go so bad. I'll do anything. I'll pay any price. Just somebody tell me what. And they look around and say, all right, I'll tell you exactly what. We know exactly what you're talking about. The founder of our cult, the founder of our religion, the founder of our system. Here, read some of his books right quick. Just read this pamphlet he wrote. Read his dying words, or his living words. And they go, yep, that's it, that's it. That's exactly what I was after. And they say, we thought so. And you say, did he tell us how to do it? He gave us specific methods. He left them right here. What are they? It's always behavior. What else are they going to do? Now, if you ask, which you've already done to yourself, but if you ask the institutions of life, if you confront somebody directly and you are still sane and not being accusatory, and say, wait a minute, I may try this. I may come and dance or meditate or pray or go through your rituals. But, you know, I, I would like a little more than that. No offense, I'm sure that's good for little old white-haired ladies and my grandfather, you know, comes here to mass constantly or whatever it is. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I am looking for something a little more personal and internal. And that somebody will finally tell you, good, good. And they will not deny that there is that element. They will not deny that then they still constantly, in the main, want to fall back into saying anything but mental, spiritual. That they will say there, there is that kind of element inherent in what we do. And then they, will, they would more likely say things like, it's not quite an easy matter to directly feed it, which is why we go through these rituals. And it's not a lie. If you said, do you really understand that? To my figurative person I just made up, they might go, all right, I do and I don't. That is, I don't know how to do it any other way. This is the way they taught me when I came here. Uh, you've heard of Saint so-and-so or Father so-and-so or Great Guru so-and-so. You go, yeah. Well, he's, you, know, you know he's the one that we founded all of our activity on. Yes, yes, yes. And that's what he said. And as we've had several hundred years or a thousand years of history of people doing this. People that you've heard of, people that wrote other books. And they name them, you go, yes, I know that. I don't want to tell you. You ask me if I understand it completely. Is it fasting or going through, you know, getting on your knees and then standing up and saying two or three words and light a candle and get back on your knees and say a few words and blow it out. Or, you know, just something goes on and on and on. And you say, well, are you sure? Do you understand that that will definitely bring about what I'm saying is this kind of you know, I have an internal itching. You know, something in here. Yes, 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 I know. But are you saying that you understand that it will eventually feed that? I can't say that I understand it, he would say to you, if he could be lucid. I can't say that, but it, he's going to end up saying this. <laughs> well, literally, in a, good, in a positive way, he's going to say, what else do we have? And you can't deny there's no way that you could make a rational argument if that was what was called for anyway to say, well, dealing with behavior, dealing with the body will in no wise ever be conducive to producing a new state of consciousness. You can't say that because I already pointed out all you got to do is starve yourself and you'll get dizzy. And if you've already got a proclivity, 
if you already have an interest, if you start out trying to starve yourself on the basis as I won't talk to God, I got news for you. <laughs> well, obviously, no. uh, <coughs> I assume I don't. Literally. Or just sleep deprivation. Stay up three or four days and you'll talk to God. <laughs> talk to Allah, Jehovah, Muhammad. You can call up anybody. Bugs Bunny, Mel Blanc. <laughs> That's all you got to do. <laughs> but notice some of them are taken collectively as it should be but some of them are taken seriously such as staying up and praying going through some kind of I'm sure they got a term for it a non-stop marathon, marathon praying petitioning of the gods they would tell you there is a difference between that and just getting out and driving up and down the highway getting on the perimeter to the beltway around the, <laughs> your city and trying to stay up four or five days in a car by yourself and after three or four days, you look over, and sure enough, what was a shadow coming from the light post when you went by in the seat, you look over, and I'll be goddamn this God. And they would say, well, yeah, but there's a difference. But neither one. The person in the car wouldn't even be doing it, but those attempting that their intention was to do something that would create a transcendental experience those attempting to lead it by some authority by some records some history they would say no 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 we're we're our attempt is to get in touch with the cosmos the forces of the universe etc and so we go through certain rituals because what you're going to do you're just going to walk in here and stand and go all right i want to be in touch with the universe you know you got to earn it you got to work for it okay okay, okay. how and it's always behavior and it's not a cheap shot because the ordinary person where are you going to start? And you say, well, you're right. And yet, neither they nor the person in the car, which the person in the car is kind of a throwaway, but I just want you to see, those that say, ah, oh, that's not serious. You know, dope heads, just people, that, you know, just guys that are on speed will stay up like that and they hallucinate. No, nah, no, nah, those kind of people are not trying to do anything transcendental, anything seriously mystical or anything even seriously intellectual. They're just, they're dopers. I don't know what they are. They're just, you know, the fringe of society. Right, okay. But we are attempting to do something enlightening. Okay. Same thing. And yet the person, my last example, that says we're attempting to do something, a benefit. Not just personal benefit, but something of benefit. Okay. And they cannot see, they cannot say it's the same thing. If we do go through this ritual, if we, go, if we stay on a marathon program of praying, that you have whole groups over here that go off into different areas of the monastery, and that they stay up, and they pray, they go through this chant to your God or to somebody, and they do it without sleep, without drugs maybe, but maybe a, one of the older monks or somebody going by, and if he sees you begin to nod, you know, he gives you a kick, and it's supposed to be, you know, for your spiritual well-being, it's to keep you awake, and you say, if you ask them, well, wait a minute, staying up. And they say, no, 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 not just staying up, staying up with the intention of blah, blah, blah. And you go, yeah, okay. It's not the doper driving around nonstop for days, right? <laughs> just want to make sure you understand that. I understand it, all right? But you're saying that staying up and praying, meditating on something of a higher, on a higher level, not dope, not just out there playing with your own mind, but doing something with a worthwhile aim, Yes. And you do not see that it has anything to do with the direct, when it works at all, directly with the effect on the electrochemistry of the brain. Who is going to put up with that? Who's going to find any favor in it? Again, it would be easy to make uh, that sound like an attack on the stupidity of humanity. Did you say, how about that? We can see. I say we, I'll include you in it. Either that or I am, in fact, of regal background and just didn't know it. <laughs> that we could understand that all of it, all mystical experience, all attempts to do something of an extraordinary transcendental nature, such as praying constantly, chanting, fasting, when it works at all, when it has any effect that people say, ooh, this stuff works. I didn't get exactly what I wanted, but it is having a direct influence on my inner life. All it is is working directly. When I say all it is, that's enough, but it's working directly on the brain chemistry. 
And then we can say, ha, do you realize that no one understands that except us? And you can say, yeah, boy, even the popes, all these great mystics, all these great religious teachers that think they've had these great experiences of Satori and being blown away and enlightened, all they did, they did something, they stayed up, they tortured themselves, they scared themselves to death, they ran up the edge of a cliff and went, ah! In fact, they was going to jump and they did it day after day until finally one day, and all they did was affect the brain chemistry. Instead of saying, wait a minute, we're so smart and they don't see it. What if they saw it, what good would it do them? What if you could make them see it? What if you're smart enough to see it and those poor people aren't? And you thought, well, if I had the power by God, I'd open their eyes. If you had that power and you open their eyes, uh, the, the kind of thanks you'd get from them, I would just like to say, have on your best sneakers, your best running shoes. <laughs> but literally, what good would it do people? None. Now, I could you know, fool around with it probably a little bit and get uh, fairly religious people, fairly middle class people who believe that there is some basis to such as this or even those that have faithfully tried to pursue some so-called metaphysical or occult or mystical school or form of some kind that really tried it and, if I, and, and spoke highly of it. And if I could get their attention a minute and not make it as an accusation. Now, so would you realize those kind of experiences, everything you ever heard about and everything that you think you've had is here. I mean, it's the brain chemistry. It got affected in a way out of the ordinary. And I might get them for a second to go, well, you know, I, there's got to be some truth in that, doesn't there? And I'd go, well, yeah, I think so. And they'd go, huh, you want some more coffee? <laughs> what is she going to do with it? Uh, to answer our own question, though, am I safe in assuming I'll go ahead, it's my birthday? I'll assume that everyone understands that it's just but now that I have just driven everyone redundantly nuts. <laughs> and that you understand that all of it, everything from Buddha to Moses, people I dreamed of, you know, the Jesuses of the world, the Confuciuses and everybody else's is, is of the world. And even, you know, the little touches I've had, everything I've had, it's a change in the brain chemistry, and that's the beginning of it. And Physically speaking, that's the end of it. That covers it. That's it. And then you ask yourself, is that of any use? And the answer is, you betcha. <laughs> well, of course, there's always the asterisk, I guess, of saying, I guess it's according to how bad you want to do something. <laughs> Because since it is the basis of whether someone sits or stands on one leg and chants a word over and over for 40 years or stars themselves off and on just to the point of death over and over and then brings themselves, if they go through that or if they try to stay up days at a time and chant the name of somebody or a made up word, whatever, and they do have an experience that they're conscious and they're no longer just conscious as some sort of individual ego, individual mind. They're conscious without thinking about it that they get the big P.O. <laughs> Payoff. No. They get it. If it indeed is nothing but, if indeed it is, I don't mean nothing but as you know as a dismissal, but if it is, a change in the brain chemistry. It doesn't, you don't find appealing to not only save potentially 40 or 50 years, but at least instead of 40 or 50 years of hit or miss, and even they will not guarantee it, at least if you go right at it, you might find out, Jesus, boy, am I a little suited for this. Mm -hmm. Or I don't have the brain chemistry to start with to do any better. <laughs> Which those of you that didn't get the metaphorical or the symbol, no, the metaphorical, of the guy, the old grouches, grouch, the old grippers grouch, the old sore heads grouch that said, the collective ain't crap. The collective you can look at is ordinary intelligence. He says, the collective ain't crap. As a matter of fact, most of the individuals I know just barely are. <laughs> you understand that if you directly attack and if you see what it is, and you would directly try and affect your brain chemistry, which the way it is now, whatever it is, 
what you think is the collective in the story of the old grouch. That, that ain't crowd. But then what if you try to do it and realize that you individually... But not really that much better. <laughs> you understand? What if you just directly try to affect your brain chemistry? That Well, I see what it is. I see what fasting is. I understand what praying is. I understand. It's this. So you can bypass. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to give up anything behaviorally. You don't have to throw away your possessions, etc. You just directly do it. Except for this. If you directly do it and find out, wait a minute. I can't do this. You know, individually, I ain't, I'm not crap. That can be, oh, I don't know, certain, can be kind of off-putting to some people. <laughs> Whereas, if the dream is, well, boy, I wish I could save up my money. I wish I could arrange my life. I wish I could chant more than I do. I wish I could. All I can do now is I go a little fast on the weekend. And I get dizzy and I've got to be at work Monday. God, I wish I, I wish I had the time, my life arranged where I could do that because... <laughs> Hey, man, I'd, be, I'd get so mystical and awake, I'd make Buddha look like you know, he was still in his mother's arms. As always, it's the safety of ordinary, civilized, collective hobbies. Nothing required, no disappointment. The benefit is you can directly work on it. You can refuse. You can refuse. To think about what everybody else, what anybody else collectively thinks about. That's the direct working immediately. No sitting, no chanting, no fasting. It's worse. <laughs> to whatever, whatever, whatever comes to mind, whatever comes to mind, don't think about it. <laughs> if you'll tune in again next time, perhaps we'll go a little further. <laughs> As, assuming I can fool you again and you think there is any further. Oh, yes, that does bring to mind something. I'll bring this up next time. <laughs> <laughs>